Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And today I've gone with garden designer and Great British Bake Off star Jane Beadle to the local garden centre Maytree to put together two simple but effective pot ideas for your winter pots. And they're plants that will pretty much last you through until we get to the spring. If you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, click subscribe. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when there's a new video uploaded, click the notifications bell. I'll put the names of the plants in the description below with timestamps and also a link to Jane's Kitchen in Kent, where she does online and in real life cookery courses. So Jane, what are the first things we should be thinking about when we're planning winter pots? Well, for winter pots, uh, you, you have to think that the plants are not going to grow much over the winter. Unlike um, when you plant for the summer, when you expect everything to grow into sort of this mad, wonderful exuberance. So you must buy extra plants and pack them pretty full. You don't need to feed anything because they're probably not going to take up a whole load of nutrients, but maybe refresh with the compost. But the most important thing is the way you plant them is the way they're going to be looking if they've survived um, at the end of the winter and they're not going to put on an awful lot of growth. So just be prepared to buy more really. And so what about, uh, what do you look at? You're coming into the garden centre and what kind of, how are you going to sort of balance your plants out? What sort of number of colours you're going to look at? How are you going to plan the structure? Well, I, I was always taught not to have too many colours because otherwise it looks, as my old tutor used to say, like a dolly mixture um, combination. So I would go for two or three colours. And if you're at all unsure, it's very hard to visualise sometimes, get your trolley, put a combination of plants together in the trolley and see whether you like them, basically. Um, I always find that really helps because you can see something that's very seductive on the, the trolleys in the garden centre. And then when you try and put it with something else, it just doesn't look right. Um, and choose colours that you like. You're going to be living with them all through the gloomy winter months. So it's important that when you get to your front door or, or your back garden or wherever you've got your pots to go, oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? Because you need to have a smile on your face in January. And we all really need something lovely at Christmas as well. So yes, choose something you like. Not, not something that's trendy, just something that gives you some joy. The first things we saw were some miniature Christmas trees. And I know you were thinking of putting those as a centrepiece to the pots. Now, what are the pros and cons of that? Yes, those little Christmas trees were very seductive, weren't they? But actually, they will grow into massive trees. Um, so one, they would have taken up a lot of room in the pot and quite hard to then plant other things around them. And two, I hate to waste plants um, unnecessarily. And if you've only got a small garden like I have, I couldn't put it in the garden. It would have to either sit in a pot sadly until next year, um, and then what was I going to do with it? Because it would hopefully have grown. Or you would have had to given it to a friend. So I would say, have a look at the plant, see what is going to happen to it long term, and don't just be seduced because they put something attractive in a red pot and it happens to be Christmas. And if you could go through a bit of the principles of say, how you decide between height and volume and color. Yes, it's quite hard really to get the whole thing right. I think going back to it, just lay it out and see whether it works, bearing in mind they're not going to grow. So for me, I like something taller in the middle of either my window boxes or my containers because it just gives a bit more interest to have things at different levels. You don't want anything too, too big because you have to think of the root ball for that will take up a lot of the space in your pot and then you perhaps won't be able to get some of the smaller plants up close to it. Um, and I would go for just one thing that was taller than the others and the rest of it a bit lower because it seems to get the balance right. But going back to what I said earlier, if you set it out and usually you can find somewhere in the garden centre or on your trolley. So if you've got a, a round pot, set it out as a, in a round pattern or if you've got a, a window box, set it out very often in the... Um, there's always a tr sort of bit at the top of your trolley in a garden centre that's almost window box size. Set it out in there and if it works in there, it's going to work in your window box for both height and colour and the number of plants that you, you're going to need. You were first attracted by a sort of pink setup. Can you explain what you think the pros and cons of the pink and the yellow here is? 
Well, I really liked the pink. Um, when I very first started gardening for people years ago, I'd put that in with some silver for a Christmas window box. Um, it was called then, possibly still is, Pernetta mucronata, which always reminded me of somebody with a bit of a cold. Um, but its name is Gaultheria. Um, and the as pretty as it is, and would look stunning at Christmas, sort of those, with along with some silver, those berries will drop sooner rather than later they'll see you through till christmas but i don't think they will take you through until um, late winter early spring and also the issue with those is they're not self-pollinating and i think you need a male the, if they've got berries they're a female and you would need a male so although you could then transfer them to your garden and i'm all for that because you don't want to waste those plants um I think it's extremely unlikely that you're going to get them to flower and berry again next year. So in the interest of not wasting plants, I put them back on the shelf. And what did you come up with? What did you decide? Well, I am. I decided in the end to go for a very traditional combination of silver, white and red for a number of reasons. Um, I'm a bit of an old traditionalist sometimes in my own planting and I thought it looked very festive and also I managed to keep my cyclamen that I used last year going through the summer I just shoved them in some of my pots in the front garden and they've all come back into bloom again and they're red so I didn't want the red going with the pink um, I also managed to get my do we call it barbed wire plant? Is that what it's called? I don't know what its proper name is. Um, we also managed to keep the barbed wire plant going in the window boxes all summer. And in fact, it's been so vigorous, I'm going to have to cut it back. And the silver and the red and the white just look so stunning together that, yes, I plumped for the good old Christmas combinations. And the, the beauty of putting the cyclamen in, and I've used white cyclamen this year, is that if they go a bit manky come January, February time, you just hoik them out. They won't have made an awful lot of root because it's winter and they're not really growing. And then you can just refresh it. If you want something a little brighter and chirpier to get you into the spring, you can just put in some lovely polyanths without disturbing all the other planting. So yeah, that's what I've gone for. Um, call me old fashioned, but red, white and silver and uh, yo ho ho. Yes, it does look very pretty. And we did a video together last year on winter window boxes, which, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Mm. Uh, but I've been really interested to see how actually both the ivy and the barbed wire plant and the cyclamen, so that's three elements of those winter window boxes, are actually part of your window boxes this year. So actually that makes the cost of uh, buying these plants much less if they're going to go through they're going to, they've been in your window boxes for your summer planting and now they're going to do a second winter. That's really quite good value, isn't it? It really is good value because if you go to buy plants just for me for four window boxes and a couple of pots, you can spend £100 or so. And if you then ditch them um, come February, it, it is a, an enormous waste. And I don't think I wasted anything from last year because I had some small eucalyptus which I passed on to a friend with a larger garden and they look lovely. Um, I've got my cyclamens that are, are flowering underneath my olive trees that I just shoved in there. And I noticed one in the back garden as well that I just popped in the back garden in a shady spot. As long as they don't get too wet, they survive. Um, the barbed wire plant is going a great storm still. I haven't got the heart to, to take it out of my summer winter boxes and it looks gorgeous with my pink geraniums in the summer. So actually I hadn't wasted anything. And the ivy, you will see, I'm going to trim all the ivy back um, because that's gone incredibly well and it's being a bit thuggish. So I don't think I wasted anything from last Christmas. Um, I'm just really refreshing this Christmas, which is really rather nice. And in terms of actually planting the pots, particularly as you, you're sort of taking out some of the summer plantings and you're taking out some of the soil, if you're going to replant pots, what are your tips for that? How much compost should we do? We have to replace all the compost or just some of it. And uh, is there anything we need to know about that? Well, I, I don't find in the winter you need to replace all the compost um, because the plants are really not going to chuck out much root growth and they're not going to take up a huge amount of nutrients. So I have taken out a top layer as well as I can, leaving my ivy and my barbed wire plant in there. And I'm just going to 
refresh the top layer. Um, in the summer, it's a completely different story. Take out as much as you can, but then, of course, you can feed them every week so they they don't run out of nutrients. You know, compost has only got a limited number of nutrients in them, and you do have to refresh or feed in order to get the better, best out of your plants. But in the winter, it's not so crucial. As long as you don't have anything horrible in your pot, if you haven't if you start digging away at the compost and you find some little white grubs in there, there's a very good chance you've got vine weevil. Um, and vine weevil is just a real pest for containers especially. So if you do find them, they look like little maggots um, and they're sort of slightly curled up and rounded when you get near them. If you've got a lot of those in there, you may need to chuck out all your compost. But if you've got perfectly good non-infested containers just sort of take out oh I don't know about that much maybe um, and refresh with some new compost and you should be absolutely fine for the winter. Lovely are there any other tips we need to know? Don't um, so. Well I don't know as we're coming up to Christmas you could don't forget you can always put some little battery powered lights in there and make them look absolutely splendid. <laughs> Fairy lights are not just for Christmas but um, they would make everything look rather jolly this year and we all need jollying up I think. If you'd like to see Jane's garden, she's done a wonderful transformation of a 50 foot muddy backyard in the middle of a town. And that's in our best garden designs playlist at the end of this video. And if you've enjoyed this, then do please hit like, because then I know you'd like to see more about container planting. And do subscribe to the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.